Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see the holy month of Shahwal and get the Muhammadan Way app. Click on month, click on Shawwal and then the realities of every month on this spiritual journey, on the ship of these awliyaullah that traversing into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to know where we are and to know the reality of the coordinates of that hijab and that reality that the holy month the Shahwal from the power of nine on the tenth month has the secret of the number 90. That the 90th name of Allah Al-Mani, the one who prevents harm. The 90th name of Sayyidina Muhammad from Dalal al-Khirat is Ni'matullah, the blessings of Allah 90th chapter of Holy Qur'an Surat Al-Balad and highlights from the surah and the reality of the surah is that Allah is asking in that holy surah, have you attempted your ascension? And the reality of that ascension is and then Allah asks, is to free a slave. Then another holy ayat al-kareem from Surat al-Balad, their place will be upon the right hand. Means that that hijab, that tajalli is dressing the name of Allah al-Mahni, the Ya Rabbi Ya al-Mahni, the one who prevents all harm, that through the key and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Ni'matullah. That through this reality of Sayyidina Ni'matullah, grant me your guidance and your realities. Then you read Surat al-Balad. And what Allah want to reveal to the heart of the servant. And then the understanding of that hijab, these were 12 pardeb, 12 hijabs that were dressing the light of Sayyidina Muhammad as that light was coming into existence. As Allah has no time, that light is eternally dressing. Means Allah is continuously dressing with His Divinely Nazar upon the light of Sayyidina Muhammad So in the tenth month, the tenth hijab, the tenth veil that we're moving through, these are from those understandings. It was revealed for 3,000 years Allah on this parda was praising by saying, Subhana man dul arshi amma yasifoon, glory be to the owner of the throne above all else attributed to him. This is the hijab of eminence, Hayba. These understandings are for our contemplation to understand what is the, the tajalli of this month and awliyaullah come into our life and Repeat for us that Shahwal and the reality of ten, that nine and Ramadan was a time in which Allah's great gift was to annihilate the servant. That with all the servant has built upon himself for these nine months of this hijrah, every year is a new journey towards Allah. This whole year of all the badness and bad character, Allah's grace and mercy is the realities of Ramadan in which anyone who enters into the fast, Allah will begin to destroy all bad characteristics, all the sins, all the difficulties that insan has put upon himself and that shaitan has cast upon him through bad actions and bad deeds. Immense blessings that no way to achieve that blessings other than by fasting. As soon as they fast Allah will give and this is just what one thing will Allah will give is to destroy all that is 
not favourable to Allah As a result the nine takes the servant to be like dust, that dust like a nukht. So when they describe that nine and the reality of the ninth month is submission. So in this kalam and in these different descriptions they talk about the nukht, they talk about submission. Nine is the month in which makes everything to submit because anything false that Allah was not pleased with He destroys with the reality of Ramadan, make it to be nothing. Make it to be a dust and that dust is the only thing that can appear in the Divinely Presence. Then the holy month of ten, the holy month of Shahwal is one and a nukht. So that they bring us as a dust, as a particle into the presence of the One which is the One whom sits upon the arsh. How you can go and to be dressed by the tajalli of the arsh if you're one? So when we say binary code the computer people understand. Binary code is called one and zero but its reality is actually on and off and a deeper reality is that it's always on because there's no off, you can't destroy energy. So binary code is one and zero means something is on, something is off. All our technology and everything that blessing this earth now is based on binary code. Something is on, something is off. Then the deeper understanding for awliyaullah is that it's an energy because there's no one and zero in the computer. It's a current that comes, hits and makes something to go on. The current is still there but it retracts and then makes it to drop down. So it means the current is always on because energy can't be destroyed. So Allah flowing current is flowing. When Allah womb to manifest He hit and the one will appear. When Allah wants it not to manifest Allah reduces the current, lowers it and it becomes a nukht. So means this energy is eternally flowing, this reality is flowing. This is the reality of La ilaha illallah. And then what manifests is Muhammadun Rasulullah Our whole life's journey is to achieve that state that Ramadan dressed upon us, blessed us with that to continuously take a state of nothingness. Ya Rabbi let me to take a path in which I train myself to be nothing and Allah will send you everything to pound upon you, smash upon you, to destroy and to crush you. So that your oneness becomes nothing in Allah's presence. So what Nabi Musa wanted, he wanted where the two rivers meet. He wanted the reality of Zulfiqar and what Allah wanted from Nabi Musa because he's a one, he's a Rasul in Allah's dunya. So mulk and malakut, mulk is a one because it manifests, malakut is invisible for you, it's a nukht, you can't reach it. <laughs> then the reverse reverses. Well Allah just says, you want to reach my malakut, stop being a one, be a nukht. If you reach nukht and efface and bring yourself down to be nothing, I will show you my one. That's why this relationship like Zulfiqar we said about mirroring. 
the depth of the reality of mirroring is really not understood. So on and off is always mirroring. You live dunya in this mulk like you're on, you know everything, you got it all, you have everything planned, you're the one. You know they say, they say you're the one, <laughs> hey baby, you're the one. <laughs> you're not going to see anything from heaven because Allah says, if you're the one, forget it. The heavens are veiled as if it's nothing. They're behind a parda like iron, they don't know anything from what's beyond that level. So now come and tell no Allah is teaching us this game that we were sent upon this earth was actually give your one back. So we said last night the greatest taslim and the greatest submission is to give your will back to Allah After you gave your money, after you gave your time, after you gave everything about yourself Allah still saying, give it. Sayyidina Ibrahim gave everything, gave everything. He was the generous one amongst the angels when they would talk about Sayyidina Ibrahim until Allah I want the boy too. You gave everything, now I'm going to test you with Sayyidina Ismail So means that giving, 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 testing, testing, testing until Allah wants the greatest gift I gave to you was your free will. The fact that you can make and choose, don't choose anymore and submit. That is the most difficult, impossible reality to reach in which to submit and crush the will of the self and which it is making it to be a manifestation. So one is what is manifestation? One is when you think you're alive in this world. So this is a mulk, this is the mulk, this is the world of form, you walk it like you're alive. And only Allah come say, no this is a prison and you are merely its prisoner. Zandana hmm? wa zandani hasti. This is Zandan, where's Zardari, Zandari, Zandani? <laughs> this is a prison and we are merely as prisoners, you're not in paradise. Then Allah inspired those people whom He loves with His ni'mah that come and make yourself into nothing, crush and crush and crush and take testing and difficulty and a lifelong process of being the dot. Lose your job, lose your work, lose everything. Then you don't see this world as, I'm the one. My Lord I wish to be nothing. Nasiyan mansiya? What Sayyidina Maryam said in Surah 19, Oh I wish my Lord that I was just something non-existent. All this fitna that this dunya makes, I don't want to be in existence. I want to take a path in which to be nothing. The turuqs then are the path that teach, be nothing, be nothing, take this way of nothingness to reach to Allah's satisfaction. If you take down your force and your life force, the force that make you feel that you're so alive and so vibrant and you're the one in which all your desires begin to drop, all your hopes and dreams and wishes and aspirations are all dropping. Right? Ten years ago you came, what were you thinking your future was going to be? <laughs> I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to have big plans, I'm going to be like this, I'm going to be like that. If you're with a real shaykh it definitely wasn't that. No one should have achieved what he thought he was going to because that wasn't from the heavens. His duty was to bring it down, bring the ship down in a slow and digestible manner in which not to make that person to run. It's easier to pop the tire than to slash it. <laughs> right? So you take the slowly so that the person's 
horizon is changing. They're not wishing for that anymore. They're not wishing to conquer this earth. At one point they begin to realize, I want to conquer myself and that which I was focusing on was of no importance. And Allah showed in every example, that is the dirty abode, they will sell you quicker than a bag. You have a pension from them, they'll steal and eat your pension. You have 30 years of work with them, they throw you out as if it was you came in yesterday because it's the abode of backbiters and flesh eaters until the desire changed and became nothing, nothing, nothing. And the love of Sayyidina Muhammad the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad occupies the reality, begins to feed their reality. The energy that they feel from that reality overtakes every desire. Now their mulk they are becoming nothing. So as much as this line is, is one and the heavens is a nuqt, as this is dropping down like a graphic, this is coming up. Right? This is a dot for you when you're heavy into dunya, you can't see anything from that parda. When the one begins to collapse, this one begins to show itself. As soon as this one starts to drop, the parda becomes light, you begin to have khash. The khash is you're starting to see the one is going to present himself to you. The more it's coming down, the more that one is presenting himself to you So their whole life they understood this reality of the mirror, Ya Rabbi led me to be nothing. And in my nothingness from Ramadan and every year the Ramadan is an opening, that my Ramadan was an opening for my ears. Don't think that you open the reality of samt and, and fasting. One year's Ramadan is just to open the reality and the fasting really of the ears, fasting of your eyes, fasting of your hands and your senses, fasting of the breath. With all the senses the last Ramadan that Allah opened is the Ramadan of taste in which you taste the energy, you feel the energy. So with all senses are activated for the reality of that Ramadan, that servant is reaching into the oceans of nothingness. In that nuqt of nothingness the one begins to appear. And that's why Subhana Mandullah Shama Yasifoon that they're asking only in this state of my nothingness can I be brought to the presence of the throne. The power of the throne and the one whom sits upon the reality of that throne and to be dressed by that reality and blessed by that reality. Our whole life is about that continuous testing, how to bring that down for that to appear. The more this one begins to appear on earth, the more that one begins to disappear from vision. So it's direct like, I don't know if it, the graphics is nice <laughs> enough. This one comes up, this one goes down. This one comes down, this one comes up. So as much as Allah then you understand the hikmah and the wisdom of testing and difficulty because Allah loves you, Allah loves us. Don't think that Allah is, is trying to, to destroy us, this is for love that I destined for you something much, much higher. I destined for you to see the One but this world has distracted you and all you see is yourself and you lost the vision of the One. Then de testing in our life comes to bring down, bring down, bring down. And that's why then these knots and these songs and these recitations are so sad. That so much difficulty, difficulty so that they were so pounded that all they wanted was Rasulul Kareem, Wajikal Kareem, 
the generous light and the generous beauty of Allah that reflects upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad To be dressed by it, blessed by it, to be nourished and, and, and quenched by it. For if you're not suffering and not sad, quenching makes no sense to you. If you're not difficult and don't have sadness, what does it mean to be quenched by a light of relief? If the dunya is not crushing and not putting difficulty and sadness and crying upon the servant. It's like saying, I, I, I have water everywhere, so why would you appreciate an oasis? It's the last thing you would run to because you have two bottles of water in your hand. But when Allah put difficulty upon the servant, they're in such a state of wanting and desiring a relief. Ya Rabbi grant me a najat and a relief from this difficulty. And then that holy presence of Sayyidina Muhammad comes as a quenching of every type of thirst, every type of difficulty will be relieved by the gaze and the vision of that light of Sayyidina Muhammad And with that light what does it give and dress the reality of the soul that whatever Allah gives He never takes away. But if the servant become too much again into the mulk, he be veiled from the malakut. And to Allah crush him again in the mulk so that he can again re revisit the reality of malakut. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.